Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com, and in this video, we'll continue our discussion on the differentiation between SN1 and SN2 reactions. If you missed the beginning of this series, visit my website, LeiaFirstSci.com slash substitution dash elimination for the entire video series. What if you are given a substitution reaction where the outcome or mechanism is not that obvious? Once again, we'll analyze this with our handy checklist. Our starting molecule has a leaving group on a secondary carbon, which would give you a stable carbocation for a 1-type, meaning SO1 or E1 reaction, but it's also sitting directly near a tertiary carbon, which will give you an even more stable carbocation if you have a hydride shift or carbocation rearrangement. Chlorine is considered a good leaving group, so it doesn't necessarily differentiate between SO1 and SN2. The real clue here comes from the attacking nucleophile or base, especially since we don't appear to be given any. All we see is that we have ethanol in solution without any strong base like ethoxide or without any obvious acid catalyst. Ethanol by itself is considered a weak nucleophile or base, is not strong enough to attack as a 2-type, meaning SN2 or E2, and therefore we're likely looking at a 1-type reaction. And finally, ethanol as a solvent is polar protic, which would stabilize all the charged intermediates in this reaction once again pointing towards a one-type reaction, justifying the fact that in this case we're looking at an SN1 rather than an SN2 reaction. The reaction begins when chlorine as a leaving group breaks away from our carbon chain, leaving us with a secondary carbocation. Don't forget that we have that invisible hydrogen sitting on the tertiary position directly near the carbocation, and in the next step, we have a hydride shift where hydrogen takes both of its bonding electrons, moves over to that secondary position, giving us a more stable tertiary carbocation. Another critical factor to recognize in this step is that we have a chiral sp3 carbon, which becomes achiral or sp2 when it forms a carbocation. The next step is a little tricky. The ethanol solvent molecule can attack the carbocation from both the top and the bottom. But notice that there's a plane of symmetry in the molecule, and so it doesn't matter where the ethanol attacks because the final product will not be chiral. So we'll only show a single attack where the oxygen reaches out with its electrons, forming a bond between oxygen and carbon, and this results in a positive charge on the ethanol oxygen. Another solvent molecule in solution will be attracted to that partially positive hydrogen break it away from the oxygen and give oxygen back the electrons. This gives me the final neutral product. Notice that we started with both a neutral molecule and a neutral solvent, and our final product is neutral as well. And if you're wondering about the protonated ethanol, it's balanced by the negative chlorine that's off somewhere in solution. We'll end our substitution discussion with this tricky example. We'll start by analyzing the alkyl chain and recognize that the leaving group is sitting on a primary carbon which cannot form a carbocation, meaning if we have a reaction, it must be a two-type reaction. For a leaving group, we have OH, which would form OH- in solution, a very strong and reactive base or nucleophile. So not only is OH- considered a bad leaving group, it actually won't leave. So let's hold that thought. For the nucleophile base or solvent, we don't appear to be given anything except for HBr, which is acid. But this HBr serves two purposes. The H plus acts as an acid catalyst, and the Br minus is actually a decent nucleophile. Halogens are very weak bases, but they do make decent nucleophiles in solution. Before we can consider the mechanism for this reaction, we have to show oxygen reaching for the hydrogen, breaking those electrons and collapsing them onto bromine. Our newly activated molecule has a leaving group of OH2+, which is a very good leaving group because it wants to break away from the molecule to give us that positive charge. But even though it's such a good leaving group, the fact that it's sitting on a primary carbon means it cannot leave until something else comes and kicks it out. But the fact that it wants to leave means that it's pulling on the electrons that connect it to the carbon, pulling the electron density towards itself, and leaving the carbon partially positive. The Br- in solution is attracted to that positive carbon and will attack via an SN2 mechanism and kick out the water molecule. And so in one step, we have that substitution reaction giving me bromine where the water used to be, along with a water molecule in solution. 
Notice that we started with a net charge of zero, ended with a net charge of zero, giving me a conservation of charge. I cover many more substitution and elimination reactions in my online membership site, the Organic Chemistry Study Hall. You can register at studyhall.layerforside.com forward slash join. Again, that's studyhall.layerforside.com slash join. You can also access my entire substitution and elimination reaction video series on my website, layerforside.com slash substitution dash elimination. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.